In this video, I'll show you how to make this thumbnail gallery function so that when you your visitors click on a small image, they'll see the larger version of the same image open in a pop-up. So the whole gallery experience becomes much more interactive. So first, I want to prepare all my images. I've already done this and I've put up a separate video that shows you how to optimize your images in Photoshop. I want to optimize them so that they load fast and I also want to resize them so that even when the large image opens, your site visitors can see the whole image in one piece without having to scroll. So what I did was for all my tall images, I made sure that the height is less than a thousand pixels, about 800 pixels or so. And then for all my wide images, I made sure that the width is about 800 pixels or so. This will make sure both the wide images and the tall images will be fully visible without your visitors having to scroll the screen. So watch the other video that shows you how to resize and optimize your images. All my images are prepared and they're all sitting in the same folder which is my images folder under my site files. This will make it much easier to link the thumbnails to the large images and also to upload all the images in one go. So now that my images are ready, I'll go into Dreamweaver and start the first step. So the first step is quite simple. I'm going to switch to design view for this. And then I'll click on each thumbnail and simply link it to the larger version of the same image. I do this from the Properties panel. So I go up to Window and Open Properties. So let me show you with this image. I select the thumbnail image here and in the Properties panel, next to the link property where it says pound sign for a dummy link, I'll click the Browse button. Under site files I go into images and then I click on the larger version of the same image and click open. Now this thumbnail for the mountain painting is linked to the larger version of the same image. So let me save this and show you. I'll preview my site. Now I click on this image and you'll see it opens a larger image, but everything else disappears. And the only way to get back to my website is by clicking the back button. So this is an easy way to link thumbnails to images, but it's not very convenient for the site visitor. This is why we will use a jQuery script or a Java script, which will then open up your large image in an overlay it will dim the rest of the site and it will present the images in a nice and convenient way without having to leave this and without having to use the back button to get back to the home page. So let me go ahead and link all my other thumbnails first and then I'll show you how to use the gallery to make a pop-up. So now I have all my thumbnails linked to the larger images. And in the process of doing so, I decided to make some changes to my home page. You'll see some of these images were not there earlier. I've just decided to change some up. And that's okay. As you continue to work on your website, a few things like the choice of images or the layout may change and it always evolves. So let me show you after finishing the linking, what does this look like? So I have just a few thumbnails that are not linked yet because these go to animations and I will do those in a different way. I will actually create a page just for my animations where I'll display the videos and then this one, this one, and this one will simply link to that page. But all the others are still images. So right now if I click on any of them, they open the large images, but they open them and replace the whole home page. 
So our next step will be to change these links so that they don't just open the image, but they open it in a pop-up. To do this, we're going to use a freely available script online called Viewbox. So I'm including the link to Viewbox here with this video. Let me show you first how Viewbox works. So here's a demo that they have created. So what happens with Viewbox is when you click on a thumbnail image, it opens in a pop-up with next and previous buttons that actually navigate through the gallery. And you can see that the image container automatically resizes to the size of the image. And finally, it has an exit button on the top right that when you click it, takes you back to the gallery page. This is a much more convenient way of creating a gallery. So we're going to download this script and I'll show you step by step how to use it. So I go back to the view box page and this is the download button that we want to use. Not this, this one is an ad, but this is the actual download button for the script. I'm going to click on this and depending on which browser you're using, the download may go to different places, the way you have it set up on your computer. So in my case, Safari will actually not only download the zip file, but also extract it to a folder. Inside this folder, you have two files that we're going to use. One is a CSS file, and one is a JS or a JavaScript file. So let me take you through the steps. They've given the instructions very clearly on their website. So first, we're going to copy these files into our site folder. So I'm going to take these two files, copy them, and I'll put them inside my site files folder. Okay, now viewbox.css and then the viewbox.js file have been copied into my site files folder. Now I can begin at step one of their instructions. So there's this piece of code that I need to put into the head area of my home page. I'm going to copy this code directly from their site. Go to my home page, scroll up to the head section. Remember, this is the invisible section where we link our style sheets, our web fonts, and things like that. So right after my style sheets and web fonts, I'll just add a new line and then paste their code. So this is also a style sheet link that goes to the view box style sheet file. Next, I already have my uh, thumbnails for the gallery, but there is one thing I need to do uh, to tell Viewbox that these are all the thumbnails that should open the images in a pop-up. And that is, inside the A tag, I need to assign the same class to all of these thumbnails. Now in their example, they've used the word thumbnail as the name of the class. We don't have to use that, but it kind of makes sense. It's a, it's a clear enough name to use. So I'm going to stick to this name, and inside the A tag for all my thumbnails, that is the link tag, I'm going to add the class. So to all the thumbnails that have the pop-up images that I need, I'm going to go there, and again, inside the A tag, I will paste their code. Go to the next one and do the same thing inside the A tag. I add the class. So now I've pasted the class into all of my links. You just have to be careful that there's A, then space, then the whole class with the double quotes, then another space, and then the actual uh, file to link to. Make sure that these spaces are there and that the tags are still whole and complete. Uh, so that you don't get any errors. So this was step two. I'm going to save everything. Uh, an optional step is to add a title attribute inside the link, which will help uh, add a caption 
on top of the image. For now, I'm not going to use the captions. So I'll go on to the next step, which is to load the actual JavaScript files. So there's two lines of code that I need to copy and paste. And they're saying you do that at the end of the document. So I'm going to copy these two files. I could even paste these into the head section, but let's just do it at the end. So at the end of the document, just before the end of the body, I'll go and paste these two lines of code. Oh, that number two was not supposed to be there. So just be careful. It should only be script, then ending in slash script, and then another script, and ends in a slash script. Now, when we paste these two lines of code into the body, there is one change that we need to make to make sure that it will work for everyone, wherever you are. In the first line, where the path, you know, the URL to the script begins with a slash slash. Just before the slash slash, you need to add HTTP colon. This completes the link, so your web browser will be able to find where the main script is in order to run the pop-up. Now our last step is to actually turn on the function so that uh, all this code that we've pasted uh, with the reference to the CSS files and the JavaScript files and the class that we added into our links will all come together. We just have to turn on Viewbox and associate it with the class that we applied to all our links, which was, if you remember, the class Thumbnail. So to turn on this script, we will go to the readme file that came along with viewbox. Here's the readme file. When you open it, you need to copy these three lines right up here. This is an example of turning on the viewbox with links of class thumbnail. And this is the exact class that we've used because we just followed their example, so it'll be easy for us to do it. If you chose to use a different class for your links in the A tags, you will need to replace thumbnail with whatever class you used. So I'm going to copy these three lines, go into Dreamweaver, and I'm going to paste them here. But before I paste them, I need to make a script tag to hold them. And the script tag looks just like these tags above, but simpler. All I have to do is type script and then on the next line I close the script tag. Now as soon as I type the slash, Dreamweaver automatically closed it for me. I'm just going to delete these extra spaces in front of it so it lines up. Not, not really important, but I choose to do that. Now between the script and the close script, I'll add a new line and here I will paste those three lines that I just copied from the readme file. So this is what's turning on the Viewbox code. Now I'm going to save this file and then preview. Now when I click on any of these links which have the class thumbnail, the image opens in a pop-up. And I have these next and previous buttons that navigate through the gallery. And I have this X button that closes it. So these were the steps to set up this Viewbox script on a gallery. I'll next show you how to create another page gallery from the home page. So this way, one by one, you can complete all your gallery sections. Now that my homepage gallery is pretty much done, except for the animations, but you have another video that shows you how to set up that animation page. And once you're done, you just link each of these animation thumbnails to that page directly.
So con assuming my home page gallery is complete, I go into Dreamweaver and I just say File, Save As, and then I can call this drawing.html for my drawing page, for example. And I'm going to save it in the same place, that is my site folder, where my home page, style sheets, and the view box files are saved. So I'm just going to save this. This becomes my drawing page. So I'll take a minute to replace all these thumbnails with my drawing thumbnails. Then I'll resume the video and go through the exact same process to set up these links for the view box. Now I've gone through and replaced all the thumbnails, the old thumbnails left over from my home page when I saved as the drawing page. I've replaced them all with the drawing thumbnails and for each of them I have linked the thumbnail to the larger sized image. My next step would be the same as I did for the home page. Go through each of the links in the A tag I would have to add class equals thumbnail. Make sure to add a space before and after. So once I've added the class thumbnail to all these links, because I saved my home page as my drawing page, it already contains the view box CSS and the view box scripts and the last few lines of code that turn on the view box. So this makes it very easy to set up the gallery pages. Once you replace all your thumbnails and make sure to add the class equals thumbnail, you just save your page and you have a working gallery. Let me quickly make sure all my thumbnails have the right class. So I have gone through all the thumbnail links and made sure the links are correct and also each link has the class thumbnail. Now if I just save this file and preview it in the browser. Because it still had all the code from before, my view box is already working. So this process makes it easy to go through and set up all your gallery pages very quickly. Since we save as, we save all of the code, including the scripts, etc., that we had applied to the first page, and then the remaining pages will also work. So you can go through and complete all your gallery pages using the same process.